Hey there, and welcome to the GutterWise Marketing Podcast. I am super excited to have you all here today. Uh, we are going to be interviewing highly successful gutter contractors from all around the country and figuring out what they're doing to keep their trucks running and business booming. Today, I am super happy to be joined here by Colin DeHaan. Colin, how are you doing? I'm doing great, George. Thank you for having me. Um, of course. Yeah, just grateful to be here. So I uh, love what you're doing in the space. I think that having a specific niche like you do is is the way to go. Um, there's riches in the niches, as many have said. So Yep, yep, exactly, exactly. Well, we're just going to dive right in uh, and try and suck as much value out of you as we can. Uh, so to start right off, um, it's going to be kind of a two-pronged interview, one talking about your exteriors business and the other amazing adventure that you're pursuing, which we will get into a little bit later. Um, so let's dive right in. So first, can you tell us a little bit about what your current service business is? Yeah, well, I've got a handful of them, uh, but the main one that most of you, you all on, the, on this place will care about um, is my One Way Exteriors brand. So we have uh, two locations here in Michigan. Uh, one in North Carolina and one deceased one in Florida and soon to be another deceased one in Colorado. Um, and we can absolutely jump into that because I love talking about how I failed. And uh, cause I think we all fail every single day in business, uh, whether it's minor fails or big fails. And um, so, yeah, I, I don't I don't shy away from my mistakes. So um, so that's that's what we do. Uh, my business is fully operated or um, fully operated by others. So it's automated requires none of me i'm actually like in a naked office right now because i'm moving out of it uh, because everybody here is like colin you need to leave we need more space and they don't want me here anymore so <laughs> uh, i get to come in on tuesdays and that's about it for the company meetings hang out for a couple hours and do strategy sessions with a couple of my high level managers and then the rest is history the rest of the time i'm working on gutter launch from other home service businesses or whatever it is so Awesome, yeah. man. That's awesome, man. Super good to hear. Glad that you, uh, I'm glad that you want to touch on the, the shutdowns as well a little bit. That'll be something that'll be super valuable. Um, yeah. So we're going to, we're going to go back to the beginning. How did you get started in the trades and what led you to start uh, your, your current service business? Yeah, well, I actually um, I quit college. I went to school to be an English teacher. That was my, that was my major secondary ad. My minor was PE because that's what I really wanted to teach was physical education and be the coach, right? Um, so I went to school for four years for that to finally realize, oh, I, I don't want to do this. And so I got a job selling insurance. I did that for about two and a half years and it, I, was, I was okay, um, but it, it didn't like, it didn't scratch my itch. I didn't love it. I wasn't passionate about it. Um, and then I actually got fired from that job because they, they caught me looking for another job. And they were like, dude, you're looking for another job on the company computer. Like, we gotta let you go. And I was like, fair enough. I, I can't blame you there, you know? Um, so I got a job at a local supply house selling roofing, siding, gutters, windows, doors, all that. And I just, I found my, my people, right? And I, I just really was like, oh, this is amazing. Like, I didn't grow up in the trades. My dad's a truck driver. Mom's a dental hygienist. Um they built like three houses in my lifetime. And so I was helping build the houses. Um, but I was never like really, really in the trades. I was just always like dangerous enough to be good at things, but like never amazing at them. And uh, I just, I could talk the lingo and I loved it. I loved it. And so I did that for actually only a year. And in that one year, we'd get calls all the time. We were mostly like shingle supplier, right? That was our big thing, shingle and siding. And we'd get calls all the time. Like, hey, who do you recommend for gutters? I can't find anybody. Nobody will call me back. And I'm like, well, that's because I can't recommend anybody because they won't show up or they won't call you back or whatever, right? Um, or they show up high or, you know, half lit, whatever. And um, there's nobody that I can really recommend, but these are three companies that do buy some gutter material from us. And my general manager there was like, Colin, if you just answered your phone and showed up, you could, you could make double what you do here doing gutters. And I was like, you might be right. And, um, so I thought about it for months and went through the whole busy season with them. We hit winter up here in Northern Michigan and things slowed down. I was like, dude, I'm going for it. He's like, 
awesome. Let's, let's do it. We're going to, they were amazing. They actually laid me off like normal, like every winter, whether you're in sales or whatever, which I was in sales for them. We'd get a layoff for a month or two. So they laid me off in February through March. And that's when I started my gutter business. And um, as soon as I started making money, I called them up and said, Hey, I don't need your unemployment anymore. And cut that off and off it went. Right. So um, they were amazing. Absolutely. Like just incredible throughout that process and encouraging me and referring the heck out of me that whole first year. Um, things were awesome. And I, so I did that. I just answered my phone. I showed up when I said I would, and I, I made almost two and a half times more than I made at the supply house. And that, but I was just, I had no idea what business was. I was just, uh, I was an installer, man. I was an installer who could sell and new customer service, but it was the furthest thing from being an actual business. I was just a slave to my customers instead of a slave to a boss. So, man, that's, that's, that's amazing. That's really awesome. That's, that's super nice to hear when, uh, people like who have gone to the, the heights that you have, have, you know, started like that where you're like, I didn't no idea what business was. Like you learned right. along the way and you were able to, you were able to get all those intricacies, you know, the hard way, but honestly, sometimes that's the best way to do it because that's when it, you know, really engrades in your head yeah. there. So, I mean, yeah. I wouldn't recommend it, but yeah, no, yeah, I mean, it's, it's definitely honestly, I probably longer. lost out on like, I don't know, four or $5 million by not knowing what the heck I was doing. Uh, yeah. But you know, it is, it is what it is. So, yeah. But now you're able to teach those things and now you're able to do, you know, amazing stuff with that. So, uh, so Diving into the first couple of years of you starting that gutter business, what did you kind of do to get jump started? What were you doing to get customers on the phone? Yeah, um, to this day, and this is something that like one of the first things I make all of our gutter launch members do is they call everybody in their phone, let them know what they're doing and ask, do you have any friends or family or yourself that I can help with gutter services, right? Um, so that's number one. Um, and then Facebook, social media, uh, whether it's whether it's Instagram or Facebook or whatever, message every single one of your contacts. Let them know who you are, what you're doing now, and ask them if you can help them at all. And you will be surprised. I mean, that that built my first year of business. I mean, I made $120,000, put that in my pocket. This was 2016, right? This was before $1 was worth whatever it is now, right? And uh, it was when a dollar was worth a dollar still. Um, I mean, you could, I bought my house the year before that for $95,000. It was a nice livable home, right? So um, like things were, that was a decent chunk of change back then. And uh, yeah, I mean, I just, I just did that and just rock and roll. I just let everybody know who I was, what I was doing. Um, and then calling just every like other home service business, electricians, HVAC, uh, plumbers, unit like lawn care, um, anything, any other vertical that I could find, I was calling them and making referral partners. And we'd just refer each other all day, every day. And that, I mean, it was, it was amazing. It completely blew up my business doing that. I did not do a lot of subcontractor work at all. Still to this day, I don't really do much. Um, so it wasn't, it wasn't that it was just referrals, just relationships. So. Yeah. So really building off the current, you know, current list that you already have all the people in your phone, all the people on your socials, that sort of thing, right. building off that. And then once you, once you blow through that, then, you know, going to whoever you can find to say, Hey, you know, I do this now, this is what I got. This is what I can do for you. Let's, let's make something happen. That's, exactly. that's true. You know, that's, that's something that a lot of people um, miss out on because they're either too afraid to, make those reach outs or they're, uh, they don't know the potential. They're like, Oh, all my friends, they don't, you know, all the people on my Facebook, they don't really, you know, they don't need nothing like that or yeah, they don't know that, anybody. Or they're lazy or they're lazy. Yep. They'd rather just throw money and try boosting posts on Facebook or try their hand at Facebook ads or Google ads themselves, not knowing anything. And just be like, mm -hmm. I can't Google money. It, it sends me leads and it's not how it works. Right. They'll, they'll go and yeah. hire some, some half cocked agency um <laughs> paying them you know x amount of thousands of dollars a month and like here get me leads and the agency i mean you know the game because this, this is hopefully not yeah. what you do but you fight against it <laughs> right yeah. but like, 
well, if you only sell two jobs a month, it's profitable, right? Like it's just one of those things. And, yeah. um, you know, there's, I run into it all the time. I mean, I'll have guys message me like, Hey, I can't quite get Facebook ads going this month. Um, you know, it costs us much money. And, uh, what do you recommend? I recommend don't do Facebook ads for the next two months. Like do all these things first. It's free. Mm -hmm. It takes time, but it's free. Let's go. Let's make this, these things happen. And like, Let's go. And it's always my favorite when my gutter launch members send me a message on Facebook and they're like, Hey, this is such and such with such and such gutters, right? Just wanted to introduce myself, let you know, like, this is what we're doing. These are the areas we serve and we'd love an opportunity to serve you, your friends, family in any way that we possibly can. Let me know how I can serve you. And I'm like, they're doing it. Like this week alone, I've gotten three of those messages and that's awesome. it's so cool. So yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, Especially in the beginning when you don't ways. have a, uh, sorry, what was that? There's a lot of free ways to get leads. Exactly. Especially in the beginning when you got more time than we got money. That's what yeah. you got to do. You got to do the, you got to do the door to door. You got to do the cold calls. You got to do, you know, that's what, that's what business is. And then when, once you start scaling, obviously, and you have the budget to allocate towards a reputable Google ads agency or someone who knows what they're doing to, you know, bring someone in house, whatever it may be, you know, that's when you delegate towards that sort of thing, because Google right. ads and Facebook ads and all those paid advertising can be a huge money hole for people right. that, that don't know what they're doing. So, well, I mean, something to think about, this is a, pl a shameless plug for you, for anybody else out there, right? We're in the gutter business. All right. You guys are in the ads business, right? There's a reason it's a whole business, right? It's not meant for gutter guys to try and figure this thing out. Okay? <laughs> uh, yeah. Stay in your lane, guys uh, and girls. I'm telling you right now, do not try and figure out Facebook and Google ads. All right. Um, really cool. When you get to a point like, like I'm at where I hire an internal person who, you know, I've got one person who does all my Facebook ads for all my companies. One person does my Google ads for all my companies. And I've just got individual people, right? Uh, mm -hmm. But it takes a while to get there. That ain't something you get to do, you know, when you're doing $2 million a year in revenue. Like this is when you're hitting those five to 10 million ranges when you can look at doing those options. So exactly, exactly. And kind of speaking on revenue, what, uh, what, are, you, what are you pulling in about average, would you say across your uh, locations? Um, so headquarters, headquarters is, is our largest one and, uh, we'll, we'll do, now mind you, we're in a super, super remote area where right? I've got to serve four counties to hit a hundred thousand people. So really, really remote area. Uh, we'll do like, like five mil this year here. Um, North Carolina is new. Uh, we should come in just under a million in their first year of operation. And that's, that one is gutter only, but um, but yeah, that's those are those are the two that are that are rocking and rolling. Uh, we have Traverse City up uh, a little bit north of us that we haven't put a ton of effort into, but that'll do about one and a half, two million dollars in its second, two and a half years in, so three years, wow. this is the third year. So not I launched that location. I had the right guy. Ended up he uh, he had a a criminal history that our background check somehow missed. And mm -hmm. so I had to cut bait with him. Thankfully, right before, like we found it before the cops found him. And mm -hmm. then like literally the next week he got arrested and indicted wow. and stuff. So wow. it worked out pretty well for us. Uh, but we uh, we didn't have, we don't have the, the leadership that we need up there. For now. Yeah, yeah. We're actually gonna, I'm gonna ask you later on uh, in the episode, I'm gonna ask you a little bit about uh, recruiting talent and making sure that you're recruiting good talent. So maybe- One of my favorite you, Well then, that, perfect. Um, but no, that's that's really impressive, honestly. And I know that you guys keep a lot of things automated um, in your businesses. So uh, it's it's maybe a surprise to some, but it's not necessarily a surprise to me that in, you know, in the business's first year, that one location will be almost able to hit a million. And then in the second to second and a half year, that other location will be close to 1.5 to 2 million. Um, because of that automation, I think is a huge, large part of it. I'm, I'm a huge fan of business automation and, and delegation and things like that. Getting yourself out of operations, out of sales, all of that type of stuff. Um, but I would love for you to speak on um, what you guys are doing currently in kind of 
Well, first off, I would love for you to kind of explain that automation process and kind of how you guys delegate things uh, to keep things running smoothly and what you're doing currently to keep the trucks running, keep the phones ringing, making sure that you're getting consistent lead flow. Right. Yeah. So how we, so how we got to where we're at, um, I had to really adopt the mindset of finding people who, who are better than me at certain skills. And I had to be okay with letting somebody be better than me and letting somebody kind of run a, a division of my company, whether that be operations or sales or admin or whatever that was. Admin was really, really easy for me to give up because I wanted nothing to do with it. Right? <laughs> the operational side, um, it's not like the sexiest thing, but I really, really love doing things super efficiently. And when they're not done efficiently, I get frustrated. So that, that was actually the hardest for me to give up sales. Like once I, I didn't really start building a business until year three of being in business. So by that point we had, we had a name, we had a brand, we, people knew we were the premium company, charging premium prices, offering premium products, all that. And when they called us, they, they knew what they were getting. Right. So it was really easy to, to hire sales reps and let them kind of ride on my coattails and win, right? It was like, they just, they got to win because they, they worked for the company, right? Um, so sales was pretty easy to kind of pawn off, but the operational side was really, really difficult until I found the right person um, and then let him kind of run with it. And he made it a hundred times better than I did and brought in inventory management and all that good stuff. Um, helped streamline truck setups. So all of our trucks are set up the exact same. And, well, excuse me. Um, you know, just streamlined a lot of things for us. Uh, you know, made the decision to do six inch gutter only versus five and six. So we went from having a 40 by 60 warehouse full of gutter product to a 40 by 60 warehouse where we have like a little 20 by 30 section of gutter product and the rest of it's like what do we do with all the space now and you know we niche down we stock five colors and that's it anything else is an extra charge um we just we really like niched down kind of like you did right where you start where you serve gutter companies only and uh, that's what that's what we did we just niched down from doing everything to doing this one thing and the rest is history interesting interesting and um, I would love to hear a little bit about why you chose to move to that uh, niche space because you know I'm familiar with why it makes sense for our industry and, and, and marketing agencies. But moving from uh, just doing six inch instead of five and six uh, is really interesting to me because I know you know I 90% of gutter contractors we come across do five and six, and a lot of them are doing really well. So what what was that decision process and why did you move to to do yeah. that? Well, most of these gutter contractors you're working with are still on the truck, right? They're still the one doing the sales. Um, mm -hmm. Most of them, right? Obviously, this this is not a one size fits all type thing, but most of them, it works because for me to go out and swap a machine from five inch to six inch, I can do it in six, seven minutes, right? Somehow, when I put a crew out there, it takes them 30 minutes to an hour to change a machine, right? So that's downtime. Um, a second, there, there's so many reasons. I'm just going to list right through them all. Um, oh crap, boss, we grab five inch hangers instead of six inch hangers. Um, on the truck, you then white is like the primary color that we install up here. Um, I know like Florida, Texas, it's all different, but up here, white is like the biggest color. So we would stock five and six inch white coil, five and six inch end caps, miters, uh, end caps, like everything. A's and B's, three by four, four um, two by three, all of it. We would stock all of it in this truck. And this truck was just like bursting at the seams with material. And they'd get to the job site and be like, ah, oh, crap. We just kind of looked and we only had, we thought we had a full box of three by fours, but there's two by threes in the bottom of it. And we don't have enough. It was just like one thing after another. And then it created confusion for the customers. So sales became more difficult. Well, like, what does my neighbor Joe have? Like, oh, he's just got five inch. Like, I, I, I'll, I think five inch would be okay, right? Um, there's so many ways that to streamlined. And then the warehousing, 
uh, material waste every time they have to swap the machine over. Oh crap, forgot the next job, a six inch. Like, oh, I got 10 feet of white in the machine right now. I guess we'll cut it off and that goes in the scrap pile. 10 feet of perfectly good white coil, right? Uh, mm. There was so many benefits. Uh, when we switched to six inch only, those calls to the office, like, hey, we grabbed the wrong size, whatever, gone, like completely eliminated. Um, yeah, we, we don't run into that issue anymore. Our warehouse is way cleaner. Our ordering is way more simple. Everything, like, yeah, I, that's a whole nother thing. Your production manager, now he doesn't have to order five and six inch stuff. It's all just six inch and three by four. Off we go. So it just streamlined everything. Simple scales, right? That's it. We wanted to make it as simple as possible. Last year, 2023 was the first year we went six inch only. And we lost one job because the customer wanted five inch. Just one, one job. Just one out of, <laughs> I don't know how many, right? Thousands. Mm -hmm. And yeah, uh, one job. And that was it. So that's a huge, like, that's a huge concern it, that, oh man, if I do that, I'm going to lose everything. Well, you might, if you're doing a lot of subcontracting work, because your mm -hmm. roofers are just selling cheap, right? Um, if you do a lot of insurance work, yeah, the insurance company is going to, going to charge you or only pay you for five inch. Well, guess what, George? The insurance company is paying you $12 a foot for your five inch and for 16 bucks a foot, we can upgrade it to six inch. So on your house, it's only going to be a $500 upgrade. And they're like, oh, that's it? Like, yeah, you get double the gutter. Like, when, I know it's not truly double. It's like 70% or something like mm -hmm. that. Close enough. <laughs> you hold it side by side, it looks like it's double, right? And so mm -hmm. that's what we tell the customer. Like, this looks like a double the size. So it'd be double the price, right? Yeah, it's not. We throw the five inch away. And mm -hmm. uh, it's ballgame. So awesome. No, that that's truly that's that's makes a lot more sense now because of the operational the side of things that that makes sense. And yeah. it's really interesting because um for the for those of you who don't know that are listening or watching to this, I used to be in gutter sales and I would always battle between uh oh should i recommend six inch or should i recommend five inch or are they going to get mad at the price because the price is too high for six inch and you know so it would also create a lot of tension and maybe not as much streamline on the sales side like you had mentioned because you don't know uh you know you could do six inch but you you can't tell if they're quite that price sensitive and you know you kind of got to look at them a little bit more and you can say well i can do you two quotes and give you one for six and one for five and then they end up just going for the five anyway because it's cheaper and they're like well what's the difference so it's like it's this whole battle so no i that does make a lot a lot of sense uh, yeah. on on all fronts really um do you guys do a lot of uh because a lot of a lot of companies with the way, the way that they think is you know the more product the better the more product the more variety we have the more people we can serve and then therefore the more money that we'll make but kind of what you're saying is like no <laughs> the less that you have it'll be easier for you to serve uh, the same amount of people and make more money in the in the long run because like you said you lost one job so do you guys do um, I mean, obviously you do six inch K style. Is there a box gutters cut, uh, put into there, half rounds, that sort of stuff, copper? Do you guys have well, that type of variation as well or just K style? Every now and then we'll do like an industrial custom bent box gutter, right? But it's it's super rare. It's gotta be, it's gotta be a big job and we, can, we make big money doing it, right? Mm. Uh, and then every now and then we'll have like six inch K style copper, right? But um, anytime, I mean, we, this just goes back to referral partners and having relationships. If somebody wants box cutter or half round or whatever, we, we sub it out or we don't sub it out. We refer it out. Um, mm -hmm. we'll never get anything back from them because they do six inch K and whatever. They're not going to send one my way unless it's in my area or something like that. But yeah, no, we, I'm a firm believer that simple scales and we keep it mm -hmm. as simple as we possibly can. But don't get me wrong, there's definitely a place for the high-end custom stuff, but it's a lot trickier for, for you to have an automated business. Mm. Right? I, I, don't, I don't know of a single fully custom shop. You know, I, I know I know a handful of guys that do some really awesome custom stuff, but every single day of the week on their Facebook story, they're in the field, right? Uh, they might not be the one yeah. doing using the snips or whatever, but they are they're a QC. They're making sure that things are going the way they're supposed to be going. Um, mm -hmm. 
because I can't release that that control because it's such custom stuff and it's damn near impossible to relay all the custom stuff to your text through a CRM. There's just mm -hmm. there's no way to do that efficiently. So. Yeah, exactly. Trying to put the notes in there and things. It's right. it's you know a lot that of doesn't people make the a lot of people make the uh, the wrong assumption that they. You know, there's this lie. And when I started the business, I can't tell you how many people told me this. Hey, just remember, there's no job too small. There's no job too big. You can take them all, right? And I was like, yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. And then the more I learned about business, the more I learned what a lie that is, right? Mm -hmm. There are there are customers that I don't want to serve. There are, there are jobs that I don't want to do. And just like you, how you only do ads for gutter companies, if a pressure washing company comes and asks for your services, you got to say no, right? Like, mm -hmm. unless you're adding that division on as well, right? You got to say no. Um, I just, it became really, really simple for us to start saying no. It was really, mm -hmm. it was really hard for me personally to say no. And that's why I hired sales reps. And I was just like, these are the rules, follow them. And, uh, <laughs> Because the boss, like nobody, nobody's holding me accountable. So mm. yeah, I know how to do stop and face. I'll do that too. Right, no problem. And then I'm like, why am I doing this? This job just took us an extra day for half of the revenue I could have been making doing gutter. Right? It doesn't make sense. So mm -hmm. that makes sense. Yeah, and as, like especially with that, uh, the saying no part. I really liked how you said the saying no. Uh, Alex Formosi, who's a huge business coach and does a lot of private equity and in, in, in that space, he talks about um, how entrepreneurship is not saying, or how entrepreneurship, I'm trying to get this right, how entrepreneurship is a constant battle of saying no to everything else, but what your goals are. And right. that kind of goes, that kind of aligns with what, uh, what you were just saying is, you you do this is your services these are your colors this is the size this is you know this is what we offer and we don't do anything outside of that because you know deep down that if we focus on this one thing and get really really good at it provide the best customer service provide the best quality installation that yeah. you can be the guy for that space and that right. will, will yield you way higher returns than being one of the guys for four other spaces so that makes exactly. sense yeah I love that. There's, there's a reason private equity is calling me, right? Yeah. And it's yeah. Because we've solved the problem, right? It has mm -hmm. nothing to do with gutter launch yet. So, um, yeah. but it's because we've solved that problem that all gutter companies have. You know, the only, the only like PE firm in the gutter industry, the brothers that just do gutters just got mm -hmm. bought out by a franchise last year. Um, and they rolled over and they're the CEO of this now. So, Pretty, pretty awesome for them. They've done some amazing things in the industry. Not that I agree with franchises. I think they're, I think they're fraudulent. I know the partners <laughs> are great guys. I'm not calling them yeah. thieves or anything. I just don't agree with the with the franchise model. Um, but uh, yeah, it's it's awesome. Like it's good to see PE coming into the gutter industry, and it's it's here. They're they're here. They they see it, and um, which is a hint almost to to the growth that will happen in the industry. Oh, and big time. It's, I think it's going to, especially with, you know, a lot of, a lot of business owners learning this automation side and learning how to do business rather than just gutters. Right. Um, I think the growth will be in super, I, I think it's a, I think it's an amazing industry to, to get into if you're not right. already in it, so if right. you do it I mean, the right way. Well, you think about it. Okay. So there's, I've got a guy in gutter launch who just bought his business. He's in, uh, in Indiana. And bought it two years ago for $50,000. This was two trucks, two machines, and a 35-year-old business, right? Paid $50,000 for it, all right? That business was, I don't remember what they were doing in revenue, something like three, four $400,000 a year. It was minuscule, $5 for five inch, six inch for six, or $6 for six inch cutter, right? Um, tiny on the revenue side of things, but a lot of upside potential. And he buys into gutter launch and he's instantly just like, holy cow, this is night and day difference. He's up charging 16 bucks a foot for six inch now in an area he thought that would never happen. Um, that business, as he automates it, it's going to be worth, I mean, he paid 50 grand for it. And it's going to be worth 
shoot probably by the end of this year all of 500,000 in in just two years right um, and it won't be super automated at all and we'll still be pretty involved in it next year it'll probably be a one and a half two million dollar business right he turned 50 grand into this like you think about this if you're an owner operator out there that's your ceiling you know your equipment might be worth more than that maybe you bought a nice duramax truck right and that's what 50 grand itself right but your assets like that's all your business is worth is what your assets are worth your phone number doesn't mean squat because everything's been tracked on cardboard boxes in your trailer for as long as you can remember right oh you've got a crm cool uh, let's let's see those data that, that, that customer database oh you've got 700 clients in here oh because the rest pay you cash on the side yeah that's not worth anything right oh most of your work is from these two builders who you're only charging five bucks a foot to yeah like i'm not interested in buying that no pe firm's interested in buying that it ain't gonna work mm -hmm. Right. Because it's it's more it turns into a job. It's not a it's not a business, yeah. it's a job. You're buying a job. Exactly. So when right. you're able to automate stuff like that, it's you know, you a business that's sellable is a business that you can fully go away from. Take a, take your two week vacation in the Bahamas, go drink some margaritas, and it's still making you money. Exactly. So, yeah. Right. And that like that's the crazy part that a lot of people don't understand is they think their business might be worth whatever revenue one year's revenue or something stupid like that. Like they Google says some weird things, but uh, most businesses are worth your assets plus maybe 10 or 15 grand. Like that's it. And I mean, I've, I've negotiated so many deals with people getting into the gutter industry and that's what it is. Like mm -hmm. that's, all, that's all you can give them. And when you have an automated business, not only is it worth, you, you know, your EBITDA value, but there's a multiplier on that based on mm -hmm. how big your business is and that multiplier can be two three four five six seven eight ten x and so if my profits on five million dollars a year let's say i'm only running 20 percent bottom line that's a million bucks right mm -hmm. well an ebitda on that at, at five million dollars a year in revenue a million dollar ebitda you're you're talking a, a 3x multiple so now that business is worth three million but if we take this back and it's just me doing the sales, running the cruise, doing $3 million a year. It's not worth anything. Literally nothing. Like here's, this is what my assets are. And here's, here's my contracts with, with contractors where we don't really make that much money. Uh, it ain't, it ain't worth it. Mm -hmm. So you got, yeah. you got the, this $500,000 thing versus a $3 million thing. No, that's impressive. The 10x in, in just one year is is very impressive. Right. Uh, and, and it stands testament to what is possible out there in the gutter industry that a lot of people don't understand. You know, I, right. I talk to contractors and business owners all day that are sitting at that one to 1.5 to two range. Uh, and they are like, well, we don't know what else to do. I'm like, well, I can, <laughs> I, you know, as an agency owner, I can just tell you to get more leads. But at the same time, like I can give you as many leads as you'd like. But if you can't automate the systems and put the processes in place to get those leads from on your website to a form or to a phone number, and then get that caller to someone, a booked job, and then a completed job, and then a review, like if that's not a, if you can't tell me exactly how that's done, I can send you as many leads as you want. And you're not, you're going to use maybe 20% of them, you know? So it's, it's hard to, and that's something that we look for a lot when we're looking at, because we are also very selective on who we work with because we don't want to work with Joe Schmo owner operator who we send a ton of leads to and we get great results for, but he's like, well, we're not, we're not, you know, you made us an extra couple, like 10 or 20 grand last month. It's like, okay, well, <laughs> did, did you answer the phone? Did, did you, right. you know, follow up? Did you, did you ask for reviews? Are you getting more referrals? Like what was what, you even get on? in front of the customer? Exactly. Right? Like, are, are you even these guys out there? Yeah, how I many of these guys show up and stick a napkin to the door, right? Mm -hmm. Or like a carbon copy thing. Here you go. Here's your estimate. They never talk to the customer. Well, who are they going to hire? The cheapest person because they mm -hmm. there's a zero value. They don't understand all the pros and cons to your gutter system. Exactly. Makes sense. Exactly. No, that 
no, yeah, that's <laughs> so it's one thing that always irks me a little bit. It's just you know, it's always there. So, can can you talk to or can you talk about some tips uh, or some just easy things or some someone who might be looking a gutter uh, business owner that's like you know what yeah I I need to step out of this role I need to I need to put some things into place. What are just a few tips that you can give to people that are looking to do that to grow their business uh, when it comes to kind of that automation? Yeah. Uh, one of the biggest things for me was I had to start hiring people who were the total opposite of me. What I ended up mm. doing for the first four or five years of my business was I'd hire people who are just like me and I'm nothing but an ideas guy. All right. Like I, you guys get, get me in a room and want, make me sit down on a computer and build out all these SOPs. I will do nothing. Like I'm miserable doing that. I hate it. I am in my zone when I'm operating my skid steer and playing on my farm or whatever and just dreaming, you know, or get me in front of a whiteboard and it's just go time. And I can strategize and build the coolest stuff ever. But when it comes to actually implementing, I have garbage at it. Like I'd have all these great ideas. This is what it needs to look like. This is how we need to do it. And I couldn't do it myself. And so I just started hiring people. I started interviewing people like my CPA or like my banker who are way different than me. Like, hey, what would you be looking for if you were looking for a new job? And like, what, what type of pay structure would you like? What type of benefits would you like? Would this matter? Would a company vehicle be important to you? Like, you know, what, what's important? Is a retirement really important or is health insurance more important? Like, or both, right? Just asking those questions on what are you looking for? And then I started hiring nerds, right? And just numbers, nerds, people who like Star Wars and crap, because I don't like that. Like I was so intentional looking for people who were the total opposite of me. And they built my business for me. I literally just empowered them. And then once you hire them, I just said, yeah, I empowered them. This is the like the most important part. When you hire someone who's the total opposite of you, you're not going to be friends. Like you're not going to be enemies, but you're not going to hang out and drink a beer on the weekend. They're not going to come ride dirt bikes at your house. They're not going to go to the beach with you and your family. Like that ain't a thing. All right. You guys go your separate ways at five o'clock and that's it. All right. Uh, but in the workplace, you guys might be cool. You might be cordial, but even then you don't really connect. So how hard is it for you to correct them or them to correct you when you're not like buddies? You know, you think about this, uh, think about your parents, right? Your parents had an open invitation to correct you your entire life, right? Sometimes they do it too much, uh, but that's that's kind of what we need them to have the ability to do. So every employee that we hire, that's even entry-level employees, I will go up to, and I, a few weeks ago, I walked in and we had a new front desk person. And I was like, hey, who are you? And she had no idea who I was, right? Um, I was like, oh, I'm Colin. She goes, oh, what can I do for you today, Colin? And I was like, oh, I, 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 I'm the owner of this company. She goes, oh, you are? And she like straightened up, right? But um, anyways, um, I had no idea who she was. But mm -hmm. in that conversation, I was like, look, hey, this is something I'm working on. I'm trying to swear a lot less. And sometimes I can get a little worked up and start cussing. Um, I want you to tell me, hey, Colin, stop cussing if you hear me start cussing. She's like, oh, okay. This is in our first conversation we've ever had. Right? Mm -hmm. um, she didn't have to, so that was cool. But so I'm, I'm getting better. But uh, I, I do that with everybody. I mean, everybody in my office has the full right to tell me, Colin, we got this. Get out of our office, please. Okay. Right? Like, you guys got it? Go. Because mm -hmm. I've given them that authority. Everybody tells me that. Uh, I've got an executive assistant. If I try managing my own money, like she's like, Colin, you're gonna mess everything up. Just let me do it. <laughs> Damn. Yeah. Right. And that's that's scary, right? Like, yeah, no, for people sure. listening to this are like, whoa, somebody else manages all your money. Like, I have multiple people that manage my money. Yeah. So they would have Check to do some crazy collusion to to make that happen. But um, mm -hmm. but yes, like that is that is how that goes. She pays all my yeah. bills, she handles everything. Um, and it's really, really awesome. So yeah. But you give these people authority in your life. And hey, I expect you to do this. 
And I also expect you to correct me if I do this. And yeah. when they get that authority, it it's like, it, uh, you ask any one of my employees, how do you like working for Colin? And almost all of them will say, it's the best job I've ever had. It's not because they make the most money they've ever made in their life. Most of them do, but not, <laughs> not all of them. Um, mm -hmm. It's not because I throw like rager parties or anything crazy like that. Or because we get to go on, you know, Bahamas trips every year or anything like that. Like we do some cool things as a, as a company, but mm. it's it's because they have ownership over what they're doing, and mm. that is extremely important to people. Mm. So, yeah, yeah, very very powerful. My ad copy. very powerful. Yeah, yeah. I write That's... all my ad copy to 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 that too. Like we hire salespeople, we call them territory owners. We want them to own a territory. Mm. Right? Yeah, we want everybody to have ownership in our company. That does make sense. That does make sense. Now, especially with that territory and ownership side, because, you know, me coming from that sales side, it, it was, that is something that I wish I saw more of. Um, and I see, and I wish I had, do see more of in, in other businesses of, you know, you get this, you know, 20, 30, 40 square miles. And then John gets this 20, 30, 40 square miles. And then right. you guys are, you know, so there's no like clashing. There's no, well, you know, Jessica from the office gave me this lead first because she thinks I'm pretty. And then, you know, and then the other yeah. guy gets mad. And so it's, this, you know, this whole thing. So, no, I think yeah. that's, I, that, I like, I like that part, but um, kind of going off of that a little bit, how do you, how do you find those people that you can put that trust into um, and how do you, recruit those that great talent all the way up from executive assistants and managers all the way down to installers and salespeople um what, how do you make sure that those people align with a what you want your company to run like and b you have the trust in them to uh stay accountable and have that ownership mindset like you want them to yeah well i want to lead this with saying i'm not perfect at it all right i'm really <laughs> good at i'm really good at attracting people but yeah. I also am not the greatest at reading them, all right? I've, I've got an embezzlement case going on right now and I've got two failed partnerships. So, mm -hmm. uh, so it had like, I'm not perfect at it. I can attract everybody and their brother and their sister, right? But um, making sure that they're the right fit is something that we're continuously getting better at. Um, a much easier for entry-level positions in mid-level management um a lot more difficult for partners uh, general managers you know sales managers even uh very very can be very difficult to find so uh, your ad copy is where it starts if you write crappy ad copy if your ads look like let's let's say gutter technician right and so your ad says gutter technician okay strike one right there you could have them say like rainwater engineer or rainwater diverter specialist or um, like you could be have a million different things, right? Mm -hmm. um, and that's like in gutter launch, people, we give people all of these. They have like 30, 40 different headings they can choose from in a bunch of different bodies. Uh, but the goal is that they learn how to write ads themselves. And then in your ad, you talk so little about what you need, but you talk a ton about what they get by working for you, all right? Mm -hmm. So all the benefits, um, like every every job posting I have, it'll be a quick little blurb about what it is, right? So I usually start off with like a really good hook. You know, tire, like around us, there's a lot of factory jobs, all right? So if I'm hiring a technician, I'm usually pulling them from a factory. So tired of working in the factory, rather work on Lake Michigan, you know, five days out of the week, it, something like that, some sort of catchy hook or, um, you know, we're ready to meet some amazing new people if I'm hiring a salesperson, uh, what, whatever that is. And yeah. then how about enjoying boom, 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 401k, awesome company car, sweet company swag, co uh, company outings, um, paid vacations, paid holidays, this, that, like boom, 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 all the things. And it's just like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. And then my next line will be like, we're looking for blah, 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 right? I got our technician, uh, to help us install seamless gutters on all of our beautiful second home, people's homes, whatever. Like I'll word it a little bit better than that. Mm -hmm. But um, 
just a quick little blurb. We don't go in real in depth. And then after that, like only qualifications are must have valid driver's license with a good, good, uh, with reliable transportation. You must be able to not show up drunk or high. I literally will put that in the ad. Must not show up drunk or high. And that's it. And some of my best technicians are like, dude, like I read through that, I got really excited. But what really made me click was when you said must not show up drunk or high, because I can still get drunk or high on the weekends. <laughs> Go for it. Like, I don't care what you do on the weekends. Just don't do it in company attire. All right. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's it. Right. And some of my best employees. I mean, I got one guy that started with, with me as a technician uh, because he, he'd been watching my ads for like three or four years. And I finally got rid of must be able to pass a background check. And mm -hmm. even though we background check everybody, um, I just didn't put it on the ad. He applied. He was amazing. And he's like, oh, you, you're doing a background check? And I was like, yeah, what, what do we find? He goes, well, 22 years ago, I went to prison for this, this, this. And I was like, 22 years ago? He goes, yeah, you're, you're good, man. Like, we're, we're good. And sure enough, he gets he gets background check approved and all that good stuff, right? But that prevented a stud employee from working for me for three to four years, right? Mm -hmm. Um, I, I attribute that to God's timing because my business was an absolute crap show <laughs> four years before him. Um, yeah. And so I would have burned up a really good employee like I did many times. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, but that's, wow. that's it. So your ad copy is pivotal, um, how you attract them. And then when it comes to interviewing, um, having really good interview questions um, that get to know who they are and they got to have some sort of goals in life. They want, they, they, whether it's buying a house, buying a new car, um, getting custody of their kids back or whatever that is, they've got to have goals in life that you can help them achieve. If you can't help them achieve them, then, I mean, don't hire them. I mean, yeah. I've had people that are like, yeah, I want to go to college and become a nurse. Awesome. Like, how can I help you do that? And they're like, what? Well, yeah, my goal, if I hire you, is not for you to be a gutter tech the rest of your life if you want to be a nurse. Like, let me let me help you do that like what, what do i got to do they're like I, I don't know well we're good friends with the dean of admin at the local community college you want me to call him quick they're like what like, yeah like, let's call him and I just call him up hey what's going on man he's like come on how are you hey i got so and so sitting across my desk from me they're applying for a position and their dream is to be a nurse and I'm wondering what type of programs you have and how we can get them into college, like night classes or something like that while they work for me. And he just, and this person literally just starts crying. Like you, like you owe me nothing. Like I haven't even worked for you and you're helping me already. And yeah, they, to the moon, right? Wow. They, will, they will go to war for you. I could get up, unholster my gun, go out the door and be like, guys, get your guns, let's go. And half my team would get up and follow without asking a question. And the other half would be like, uh, okay, where are we going, Colin? And they'd grab the guns, <laughs> right? Like, but everybody would follow. And it's it's just really cool because I've, I've, I've gone above and beyond trying to help every single person. And it's not a testament to me. Like, this is, I learned that from Dream Manager book. If you haven't read that, amazing yeah. book. Um, I just I just picked it up and I just genuinely had to start caring about my people. So Wow. I gave me chills, man, talking about that, the nurse story. I gave me chills. That's that's amazing. That's truly amazing. That's something that's that fun. I aspire. Yeah, I, that's something that I aspire to to do in my business as well. And I hope that's what a lot of people aspire to be like. And that's just, I I wish we saw more people uh, caring about their employees, like, like in that respect, because that I think that speaks on two things. One, it speaks on how important connections are like how important your network is because like the even having the possibility to call up the dean like that's huge so i think serving your community and making sure that you're showing out not just as the gutter business that's around you know but as you know you sponsor the local sports teams you uh you know you help out uh, at the local food drive i know grant hubbard uh one of the one of the yep. um members of or one of the coaches at gutter growth um he talks about this a lot. He he testifies to how important it is to be involved in the community so you can have those connections and then have the ability to provide that sort of value and provide that sort of support for 
all of your employees, your customers, your partners, your whatever it might be. Um, I think that both of those points are, are huge. And I think that's something that a lot of business owners in general, and especially gutter business owners miss out on. Right. I mean, it goes back to my first days in business, just calling every business that I knew or business mm-hmm. that I didn't know. Right. And trying to build referral partners with them. Like that's, it's for a lot more than getting jobs. Right. Mm-hmm. Now here I am eight year, eight and a half years down the road. I don't do anything in my, my business anymore, but I have all those same connections and mm-hmm. they are, they send people to us every single day. And as I build these other businesses, it just, it, it works. Right. Having those connections, being connected in the community is so darn pivotal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so speaking of uh pivotal things that a lot of uh a lot of gutter businesses owner or a lot of gutter business owners can do i would love to dive in a little bit i know we're uh we're running up close to an hour here but i just think that this is uh this is some super great knowledge that a lot of people could use so i would love to dive into gutter growth uh you've referenced it a few times Sorry, got her launched. My bad. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, got Grant stuck in my head. Dang it, Grant. Uh, but uh, got her launched. Yes, uh, yeah. I would love for you to dive in a little bit uh, to what is Gutter Launch um, and how that came to be. Right. So Gutter Launch is confused often by it's helping you launch your gutter business and it's meaning new businesses. And what it really, really is meant for is helping you launch your business to automation. Okay. So this can be brand new businesses or it can be existing businesses. And what it was built for was my expansion. Initially, I built Gutter Launch so that I could open up new locations and have operators who go through Gutter Launch follow essentially all the SOPs that I've built in my business and build something themselves out there, right? Um, what I've discovered is it doesn't work very well that way. It works really, really well for entrepreneurs, people who own their own business. It doesn't work so well on the manager side of things. Um, I think having like, a what I've discovered is it felt like handcuffs for some of the operators that I put in place, not gutter launch, but having us as headquarters, was like handcuffs and it really stifled their their entrepreneur bug, right? If you will. Um, and so they would look to us like, hey, we need more leads. We need more leads. It's like, are you following the program? Because if you were, you wouldn't need any more leads, right? Where this is a new location. How many, how many electricians do you know in the area? None. Like, okay, so you're not doing the program. You're not calling all these other trades and asking for referral partners, right? Yeah. Uh, and it, yeah, so it works really, really well for the entrepreneur. And we've had guys get in who were, you know, stuck at that 700 to a million, 700K to a million, hop in and instantly like two, two and a half X, just like monthly, month over month, like, holy crap, this is working amazing through the marketing, through the sales, through the operations, getting streamlined. It's a full learning management system for every position in your company. Now, it's not for all the custom crazy stuff because I only do simple scales, right? But it will teach your techs how to install regular K-style gutter, all right? Um, and the downspouts and the guards and all that fun stuff. It'll teach your sales reps how to sell for premium pricing. I've got people, believe it or not, in DFW, which is the mecca of cheap gutters, yeah, selling for $16 a foot, all right? I've got two, two maybe three. I know for sure two, two of them there. I've got people in Houston, North Houston, selling for 16 bucks a foot. All right. So big areas that are able to wrangle this and that have a bunch of dudes running around doing gutter for $5 a foot. All right. Um, So it works. Our sales process works. Our marketing tactics work. All that good stuff. Um, So that's what Gutter Launch is. That's, it's built for that. We've, uh, We've done about 250, 300 calls with with businesses or people interested in Gutter Launch. Uh, We have over 70 members at this point. Um, We're we're very selective on who we let in. Um, But 
what we've discovered is how we've set it up hasn't been the the best fit for everybody and so we're actually working on some new some new options for everybody and uh i got to talk to uh some some founders of next star i don't know if anybody if you're familiar with them but essentially they're their gutter launch, but for HVAC, plumbing, and electrical, and they've been around mm-hmm. for 30 some odd years at this point. I think it's like high 20s, low 30s. Uh, but they've done some really, really cool things. So I got to talk to them. Uh, we've got buying groups that are started. So we've partnered with, with Spectra and able to give ridiculous deals on Spectra stuff. Um, we're partnering with some fuel, um, some fuel cards. So save everybody money on fuel. Um, some fleet maintenance centers, partnering on that. Um, and then working some, some ads. And so we've got, uh, we're, we're currently licensing all of our ad graphics and you know how hard those are to get from your gutter guys. Uh, yeah. and so all, all of our, uh, our digital stuff, we're going to be licensing all of that. And people will have access to that to send to people like yourself, George, um, for yeah. all, all their marketing needs. And so getting all of that in place. We're just kind of changing the game and looking to uh, to do a lower monthly cost um, every month to be a member of Gutter Launch versus a heavy upfront cost. So we're digging into some cool stuff. Um, there's a lot of changes coming. So if you've looked at Gutter Launch in the past or you've thought about looking into it or you read things online or whatever, um, definitely come back, check us out. We would love to, uh, to tell you about some of the new stuff that's going on and um, and how it can work really, really well for you and your business. That's awesome, man. That's super. I love to hear stuff like that coming together, helping empower owners to get their business right and, and do what needs to be done to scale to the next level. That's what I love to hear. So, um, final question, how do you hope to use gutter launch? Uh, or what are you most excited about for gutter launch in the future? Yeah. This is a this is my one of my favorite questions. So for the last, I would say a month or two, I've been just like racking my brain on how we can serve more people. Uh, because to date, it's been a paid in full $65,000. Right. Like it's it's an it's 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 it costs a lot. It's an investment. All right. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's intentional because we want the right people in it, right? And um but I felt like so many calls that we've had were with amazing dudes, amazing dudes who just couldn't get out of their own way mentally. And there were dudes and girls. We've had, we've had a handful of females in the gutter industry too. Um, so I've been racking my brain here for the last couple of months and I've been talking to all sorts of different uh, programs out there who've been there and done things similar to gutter launch. Um, nobody in the gutter industry, but and then I've interviewed a lot of people who said no to Gutter Launch. And like, what? Well, yeah, most all of them said no, just purely based on price. Yeah. Uh, but what were like the attractive things? And so what we're doing is we're re-tiering it. Um, we're going to have a level, of an entry level, we'll call it, um, where it's everything marketing and sales. Because that's the number one struggle that we found with all with all 250, 300 businesses that we've talked to is marketing and sales. So we're going to put together, we're putting together a product right now so we can help thousands of people with their marketing and sales. And this is not going to be just a like, here, watch these videos and go do it yourself. Like it's going to be hard copy. Like here it is downloadable stuff that you can use um, like action items, KPIs. Uh, we've I've partnered with a CRM and they are building out a full CRM. So you'll get the exact same CRM that I use in my business every day with all the automations already in place, with all the estimate templates, all the pricing, all the products, everything done for you. Wow. Um, it's, it's amazing. Uh, if you get the phone system that they offer, same situation, all the different call tracking numbers and what each one is for. So you can truly track what marketing levers are working the way that they're supposed to. Um, this is like next level, crazy cool stuff that we're working on. It's going to be dirt cheap. It's going to be like two grand a month. So, um, super excited about that. Um, 
yeah, I just said that on public in public. So hopefully it stays at $2,000 a month. We'll see. <laughs> uh, it's going to be dirt cheap and it's going to provide you guys so much freaking value. I mean, just, just for reference, the average company existing gutter company that comes in two to two and a half X's in their first month. All right. Wow. So if you're doing $12,000 a week, that first week or that first month in, by the end of your first month, you'll be pumping out twenty twenty five thousand dollars a week if you just follow the the, the sales and marketing. That's it. That right? you do those things. That that's that's what we're seeing. Those are real life numbers. So two grand a month seems petty as all get out when it equals an additional forty fifty thousand dollars. So mm -hmm. um, so yeah, that's, that's amazing. That's what we're looking to do. Transition into that. Um, it's going to be, so I'm really excited for just the mass amount of people that we're going to get to serve and how we're going to just radically change the gutter industry. Um, I'm tired of people just telling you what to do. Um, there's coaches, there's groups, there's all that crap everywhere. Um, and they're great. Don't get me wrong. If you want to just hang out and shoot the shit with the guys. Right. But if you want act like real action items and things like given to you here, do this in your business, there's there's not going to be another product out there like it, especially in the gutter industry. So mm. that's yeah. awesome. That's that's truly amazing. I'm really excited to see that get rolled out and I'm excited to see the impact that it has. That's going to be something that is true, like you said, truly going to change the industry. So I'm right. very excited for that. Um, well, it's been an amazing, amazing hour talking to you, man. I am super glad that you came here to speak to us and uh, unload us with amazing value that I hope that everyone uh, was able to take down notes fast enough for uh, all the right. awesome stuff that you were saying. Uh, um, like I said, this has been Gutterwise Marketing Podcast. Uh, stay, stick around for uh, a lot of other episodes with a lot of huge players in the industry doing things that are just as good uh, as Colin here. And um, I hope that uh, you guys got some value from this. And if you did, feel free to share it with a friend um and spread the word of how we're gonna how we're gonna change the gutter industry right awesome well it was great talking to you man and i will uh see you later thanks george